Oh, hello, people. Happy Friday to you. Well, I hope you guys are safe from last night's craziness. Uh, I call it Halloween. Halloween. Uh, why would we want to kiss the devil? Uh, you know, I call it Halloween. But anyway, it's a new day. It's Friday. Uh, Shabbat Shalom will be coming soon. And uh, so I'm just here today to do another video because it's been on my mind, some mission reports and uh, some news going on right now. Currently, one particular news article I will be showing coming from Common Sense Show. He is talking about something that I can't show, but a very little bit of it. But I hope you guys go and see the whole thing uh, in the description box later. But we got a lot of things going on in Congress right now. Our president need prayer. Uh, it's just so much happening uh, around the world, around the world, you know, as I told you guys many times before that America has not repented. And I was just making comments on that last night on some different, uh, videos, but we haven't repented before Yeshua. The nations haven't repented. This country hasn't repented. So we kill, you know, killing babies and we're doing what we want to do. We haven't stopped anything. We're just going forward increasing, increasing in sin. So uh, let's go here uh, over and over to my other page here. Uh, I want to be showing some news here uh, coming from Global Live, and they talk about the fires in California. And then I'm going to be covering uh, an article coming from Greeley, uh, Mary Greeley, uh, talking about the earthquake that hit California today, another small one. They've been having swarms of quakes. And then also we know the big one can come anytime. Um, really been praying that this is not the year. Oh, it just frightens me really because of that dream I had back in the day. But man, November 1st is here. And last night I was reading uh, from Mary Not for the Lord is coming a little bit on November 1st. So I'm going to be reading the whole thing today or letting this guy audio, the audio tell you about it in fullness, captivity of Satan and his angels. And then I'm going to be talking about faith a little bit, showing a faith video coming from Randall J. Brewer. So uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to cover today in the missions report. Some new missions coming from uh, India, uh, Uganda, and Nigeria. So I'll be showing uh, those videos from Feed My Sheep today. And uh, listen to Roger talking about the updates in India. Because I told you India has got a deadline. I was just looking at some of the Indian political news. And they are not going to stop what they're doing. They want to stop Christians from being in their country. They want to get rid of Christians altogether. They do not even want Muslims in their country. They want Hindus only. And so I'm going to be uh, letting you uh, hear from Roger on that report a little bit. And so let me go now and play this. I'm going to mute this out. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, at about 2.33 a.m. local time near the town of Lone Pine, there was a magnitude 3.6 earthquake. Only 12 people so far have reported feeling it. I'm sure more did, and they just woke up and then went back to bed. This was close to the same location of the 1872 Owens Valley earthquake, which was at least a magnitude 7.5 maybe and was felt as far as Sacramento uh, Valley. This uh, earthquake created uplift, a vertical movement. It's a right lateral strike uh, fault zone. They uh, figured the 1872 earthquake was probably as large, did as much damage as the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Now the earthquake in um, 1872 they had uplift, vertical movement of 15 to 20 feet, and right lateral movement of 35 to 40 feet. Yeah, it could have been as large as a magnitude 8 earthquake, or close to it. It had leveled every building in Lone Pine and nearby settlements. Of the 250 to 300 people that lived there, 27 are known to have been killed, and 52 of the 59 houses were destroyed. One report states that the main buildings were thrown down in almost every town 
in Inyo County, about 130 kilometers, 81 miles south of Lone Pine. This is part of the Owens Valley Fault System. Here you can see the movement of the fault line. Um, let's see, Owens system consists of, um, yeah, to the east would be Death Valley. We got Bishop Mammoth, uh, Long Valley area, uh, and Ridgecrest in Coso, which, yeah, they've been having a lot of earthquakes there too. In the last week, the Coso area um, has had 608 earthquakes, yeah, in the last seven days. Look at that. And then we got this up here, which is the Round Valley Mammoth area. Yeah, it's all connected. Using Google Earth, here we have Fresno. Here we got the Coso Volcanic Field. Yeah, they're doing hydrothermal um, energy there. And this is um, Mammoth um, Volcanic System up here at Long Valley Caldera. And a word of warning, they do know that large earthquakes do create earthquakes on other fault zones. I've talked about the one by um, Coso. There's been movement on the Garlock Fault Zone, uh, which is unusual. And there's a locked zone down here along the Garlock Fault Zone that goes into the San Andreas Fault Zone. Right there, that little S-bend. Once again, proof that they've downgraded this earthquake. And I've told you guys, the farther the monitor is away from where the earthquake occurred, the smaller the earthquake would register. Um, we got a 4.53, a 4.09, 4.06, 4.31. 4 what else? 4.24, 4.03, 4.20. And that's just a few of the magnitude 4 or graders that they have listed by the computer here. It looks pretty desolate in this location of this earthquake. So to have at least 12 people so far report it. Yeah, um, it was much stronger. And over here we got Lone, Lone Pine. And yeah, that's where they figured, well, it could have been as high as an 8.3. But if you felt this earthquake, please put your report down below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Glad you could join us. America, these are indeed the darkest days of our history. There has never been a time like what we're living through right now. This is shameful. It's disgraceful. And we need to take the attitude we're not going to take it. And adding to the shame and disgrace of such despicable communists like Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, Shifty Schiff, those people who have broken the law, they've committed treason. Now we add to them another layer of co-conspirators who are guilty of worse. And you're saying, what could be worse than treason? Think. Challenge yourself. What act could be worse than treason? And now it's on the record. My name is Dave Hodges. I'm the host of The Common Sense Show. And we are the show that is freeing America, one enslaved mind at a time. We're brought to you by Prepare Stories a Day. I'm telling you guys, you can't come. This. this is now on the record. These two men that I'm going to expose here should immediately be arrested, immediately held without bail, and have an expedited trial. Let me read to you. C-SPAN. We all familiar with C-SPAN. They interviewed two former CIA directors, John McLaughlin and the weasel John Brennan. And they admitted, admitted, there's a secret cabal of people within the intelligence agency who are trying to take Donald Trump out. That means murder. These aren't my words, sorry. C-SPAN aired there. The words came out of these men's mouths. C-SPAN, not the common sense show. I'm simply an echo chamber here, repeating what has been reported to me. We're gonna go on and go a little further. 
Thank God for the deep state, said McLaughlin. And there were liberals in the crowd at C-SPAN, and they got up and gave him a standing ovation. Thank God for the deep state. It goes on to say, I mean, I think everyone has seen this progression of diplomats and intelligence officers in the White House, people trooping up, trooping up to Capitol Hill right now and saying there are people who are doing their duty and responding to a higher calling and admitting there's a secret cabal to take out the president. Let's go back when some people said, Dave, you're being a little extremist. The Russian collusion delusion, take him out, started even before he was inaugurated, started even before he was elected. We know that. Then you have this Ukraine nonsense, which is nonsense. They're not even interviewing Mike Pompeo, who was a witness to the call. They're bringing in hearsay, evidence, in secret. And now we have an admission right here on C-SPAN that there is a secret cabal, and I'm going to back up here, and I want to make sure I quote this. A secretive cabal of people within the U.S. intelligence who are trying to take Trump out. Thank God for the deep state. Can it be any more clear? Donald Trump, I know you don't want to upset the apple cart. I understand. You don't want to promote something that's going to put people in the streets. Mr. Trump, it's too late. You need to arrest these people now. Though the heavens may fall, let justice be done. I'm sure you've all heard that old saying. This is what needs to happen right now, today, with this stunning, breaking story. I am beside myself. Now, I haven't had time this morning. I've been actually doing the DIY thing here at the house. And this is now I'm jumping into going to work for the morning. I had an early morning conversation with Paul Martin. But... Um, I haven't got to go across the spectrum, but I will tell you this, this is going to go viral. This, I was told, is not proprietary information. It's not confidential. Uh, share it far and wide with unrestricted reference is what I was told, and everyone will be on top of this before noon. to give some update about our Bible giving ministries and prayer ministry, evangelical ministries and the church planting ministries. As of your shepherd, we are reaching many villages with the Bible giving and uh, we have been forming the prayer groups in different villages, in different cities. All these things is possible with your shepherd and prayer and all encouragement. I'm so thankful to Brother Bob for standing with me from the beginning to this time, always supporting. In every time I ask support for the particular needs, he's supporting and it has 
encouraged me and it has strengthened me to reach many many isolated villages our law is coming against the conversion and uh, against the mission work then we cannot move forward frequently so it will be a hard time for us to reach the villages but we are dedicated to work till our last breath and we need your support and prayer and encouragement there was an announcement that every cars like a driving license passport atm card or any other national card will be in one car only one card will be working for everything so it is leading to the chip that as we know that in the days to come there will be an implementation to put the chip on hand and on forehead god is with me always and i am so thankful to you all for your prayer support and everything so we are in the end time thank you for your support thank you for the prayer and uh, god bless us together amen shalom my friends bob barb here end time dream and vision feeding my sheep today everybody just want to give you a great thanks for all of you who stepped up in the hope for india campaign to give away more free bibles and i want to give you guys an update about where we're at in the month of october as far as our accelerated bible distribution for our brothers and sisters in christ in india we have distributed over 21,000 bibles in india alone since march some of you know that our goal is still to reach 30,000 bibles before the end of this year so in order to reach this 30,000 bible goal this means we still need to raise $33,000 to hit this goal. The problem is we are facing now is time is short. And we've been telling you that the wicked government in India is pursuing the laws that will prohibit Christian evangelism. This is why we're pushing to purchase as many Bibles in India as possible before this whole thing hits the fan. Now, I received information from our missionaries in India about the narrative going on in the Indian government right now about the possibility of a tracking system that will track everybody in India, possibly with a chip in the right hand or forehead. So they're pushing these laws to shut the mouths of Christians because all global governments of the world, like India, are well aware that Christians know what the mark of the beast is and they will oppose any form of it. They do not want Christians warning the rest of the population of this world tracking system. And it's always the Christians who are getting in the way of it. This is why Satan will have to wait till after the rapture of the church, when all the Christians on earth are minimized, and he will be able to go full force with the implementation of the tracking system all around the world, with much greater ease, because those who oppose it will be killed immediately, like it says in the Bible, Revelation chapter 13. So this is where we're at, everybody. We are going home soon, and we greatly need your help now to finish strong with this Bible distribution here in India before we leave. From your giving, you are making moments of salvation happen worldwide, and especially in India, where we need it right now, really badly. And you are making so many resources available for the people who really need them. It doesn't matter what the size of your gift is. Just make an impact in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, you can change the world with just $10 a month as a Feed My Sheep Today monthly sustainer. You are making sure that your Feed My Sheep Today stays funded and will continue to make positive changes in this world until we go home. You will see the rewards from this work manifest in this world now and your eternity to come. And just to let you know, you cannot outgive God. Amen. You are needed now more than ever, my brothers and sisters. In order to give, just click on the link below. It will quickly take you to our website where you can give through PayPal, credit card, bank draft, or you can simply just send money in the mail. There will be an address there as well. And keep in mind, if you do want to become a Feed My Sheep Today monthly sustainer, where you set a monthly amount to be debited out of your account, that option is there for you as well. We so greatly need monthly sustainers right now. Please consider that option. 
We greatly need your help now in these final hours. Just take about a minute or so, click, 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 and you're done. And don't forget to subscribe to our Feed My Sheep Today YouTube channel. That link will be in the description box below as well. There you can see where all the money that you are investing into this ministry is going and what's being used for. So don't miss out on that. Subscribe to that right away. Follow your money. This is a great investment. I promise you that. So right now we are shooting to buy 9,000 more Bibles before this time window closes for India which comes out to be around $27,000 that we need to raise over the next month or so. So that is the direction we are heading right now. Our brothers and sisters in Christ in India need our help right now. And this just might be our last opportunity to help them in this way. So please go to our Heavenly Father, see what He wants you to do, and then click that giving button and make a difference today. May God bless you all, and hang in there, for we are almost finished. Shalom. I don't know what happened. I lost one of my videos. But anyway, I'll <laughs> just go ahead on here. Uh, I will come back and show that another time. It was a video from um, Uganda with Nasasi over in Uganda. But I will show that another time. I don't know what happened. This is strange how this computer works. I don't know how Google works, but sometimes you see things on the screen and they disappear in front of you. And I, I don't know. But anyway, let me go ahead and get over here to Randall J. Brewer, and I can end this video here soon. Um, it's a letter I got from him, I think, yeah, yesterday, and about faith. It was so wonderful. So I'm going to be uh, sharing a short video on faith, because today, in this time we're living in, people, we definitely need faith. We need faith. We need faith. We need faith. Um, I don't know. I hate to be showing this stuff here, but it's okay. It's all just most of missionary stuff. But um, I learned a long time ago that living by faith is the only way to live. It's the victory that has overcome the world. First John 5, 4. The message Bible says the conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. It pleases God when you live by faith for it's what gives you, it's what gives, it's what gives you, I'm sorry, access to all the blessings he has provided for you through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Faith is the hand that receives all that God has given. It pleases him when you are blessed, when you partake of all the riches of his goodness. He smiles when all your needs are met and you walk in divine health. If you want God's best in your life, if you want to make him happy, then make the decision to live by faith. Allow faith to be in the fabric of who you are, the DNA of what makes you the person God created you to be. Walk in faith, talk in faith, act in faith. So important is this, that Romans 14, 23 says, whatever is not from faith is sin. Absolutely, people. If the way you live isn't consistent in what you believe, if you're not living by faith, then your life is going in the wrong direction. And I'm going to show this short video here that he mentioned. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm telling you, people, uh, faith is so important because I know every night I pray over you guys. I pray over situations. I pray over lands and countries. I pray over uh, uh, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, human trafficking. And for Father to completely take them down, completely expose them. And you know, every day I read the paper and somebody's being exposed or somebody's being arrested. Uh, so, you know, it ain't about me. I'm nobody. I'm nobody. It's all about him, what he can do through us believing in him. We need to believe in him, have faith in him, trust in him. Why trying to figure it out all the time? I, I it's no way I'm gonna try to figure out the high, the most high God or higher. I'm not gonna try to figure him, figure him out because he know all things, does all things, can do all things, and so we need to trust in him. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You need to trust in him. Every morning I get up and I pray over my body every night, every day. Pray over my body, head, toe, eyes, every part, every fragment of my body for God to be my doctor, be my healer. And you know, and I consistently get up every day like that because every day, he say every day, is a new day. And you know, uh, we supposed to have, he say he daily load of us with his benefits. He daily load of us with benefits, you know, but we are, we'd rather go to our health departments and our doctors and our hospitals, but he daily load of us with all benefits. So we need to be trusted in him alone because when it's over and done, as I said last night on my video from, um, uh, who was it? I gave a video on last night. I gave a video on, uh, Byron Searle, his message, and he was talking about it in his message, how the father is saying, we need to absolutely trust in him alone, people. You know, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord Almighty. So we don't need to be worrying about this old world. We need to come out of this world, come out of these demonic churches, come out of these pagan holidays, come out of all this stuff and worship the true God that made heaven and earth, people. We need to understand it's so important now to give your life to Yeshua HaMashiach. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and listen to this video. I'm going to mute it out. Life rarely ever goes exactly as planned. Oftentimes, Life will take you in a completely different direction to the path you intended to travel. But no matter what happens, have faith. Faith that in the end, not right now, but in the end, it will work out. Faith is believing it will happen. When there are no signs, it will happen. Faith is believing in your dream when no one else does. Faith is sitting in the middle of the storm of your life and still being able to close your eyes and picture the sunny skies. Still being able to feel the better days are coming despite the storm all around you. Now that's faith. Sometimes you need to risk it all for a dream only you can see. Have faith in your dream. No matter what you have to sacrifice to get there, no matter how long it's going to take, I have faith this will work out in the end. Faith is taking the first step. Even when you can't see the whole path, trust it. The rest of the path will reveal itself in time if you keep moving forward. Faith is stepping out there and having a crack when the conditions are perfect. If you wait for the conditions to be perfect to go after the things you want, you might be waiting forever. Einstein once said, only those who can see the invisible can achieve the impossible. You must have faith. What you are picturing in your mind will come to life. You must have faith the struggle will pass. You must have faith your time will come because when you believe in yourself, you are unstoppable. There is no greater asset than faith and belief in yourself. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. Have faith, success will be near. Remember, it may not happen immediately, but just know that in time, it absolutely will happen. Long term, it's yours. Just keep believing and never lose faith. Faith is believing it will happen when there are no signs that it will happen. Faith is believing in your dream when no one else does. It is believing in yourself when no one else does. Because sometimes you may need to risk it all for a dream. Only you can see. It does not matter where you are right now or who you have been. If you have faith and a relentless desire to succeed, you can really achieve anything in this world. Have faith. You will be great and go get it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Faith in the man who made us all. That's the faith. That's where it comes from. Don't come from me. Don't come from Marner. Come from him. Come from believing in him. I always know it's so easy because I believe in him. He always said I, his burden is light. His burden is light. We make it hard. We make it hard, people. We make it hard by not trusting in him. Oh, hallelujah. That's how we make it hard. 
We don't need to make it hard. You know, I think about my life in the past. I think about my life in the past. Things that me, only me and my God know about. Nobody know about it but me and him. And how he carried me through. How he got me through. Things that people done to me, I felt I could never forget. I could never get over it. I could never forgive them and go on. He helped me get through it. You know, it, you know, we can't hold on to the past. We can't hold on to things that people have done in your life. I think I counsel quite a few people who call my channel sometime and need counsel. And you know, we we don't need to be worrying about the past at all, people. We don't be worrying about how bad the devil tell us we are. Oh, you done this, you done this, you done this, you done this, you done that. Oh, look at you. You are nothing but this, you nothing but that. You need to stop letting the devil tell you who you are and let the father tell you who he made you to be, what your purpose is. You need to go to him and say, father, what is it you want me to do for you today? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what you need to do. Every morning I get up, father, where you want me to read today? Where you want me to go today? And he tell me in the scripture, go to this page, go to that page. We need to have a relationship with him, people. It's so important to have a relationship with him. Religious, religion is not going to save you. Uh, uh, Allah and uh, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Catholicism, Atheism, Satanism, uh, uh, mysticism, uh, Scientology, astrology. None of these things going to save us. None of these things going to save us. Wood, rock, and stone ain't going to save us. Only the man who made all things, all living things, the air we breathe. He's the only one, people, waiting on you. You heard what Common Sense Show Dave Hodges just said. We have a trouble in the White House. We have trouble coming. We have trouble coming because these people out there who are controlled by Satan himself, the devil him, themselves, they want to run the world. They want a one world order, new world order, one world religion. They want to take control of your life. Yeshua give us opportunities. He give us the salvation for life eternally. He give us that opportunity, but he's not going to force you. He's not going to kill you. He's not going to make you. You have to come willingly, willingly, freely, freely. He said, those who are out there, boldly come, boldly come through the throne of grace. Boldly come, people. We need to understand how serious this is, this matter is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time to come boldly to the throne today and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Take the sins out of my life, Father. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Change my DNA from Adam's seed to your seed. It's time today, people. It's time today, my Father knows it's time. Okay, he's talking through all his messengers. He's talking through all his servants. He's talking through all his missionaries. He's talking through all his prophets. He's talking through all his prophetesses. He's talking through all out there who are called their name, called in his name, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Christ, the same man. A lot of people say we got so many names, but he is the same name. Ahaya, Yeshua, Yasha. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's such a wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God. You need to trust him today, people. So I'm going to go now and go over to in my video here at um, Think Maranatha, the captivity of Satan and his angels. And I think on my next video, I will come back and share a Satan personates Christ part two, because I'm telling you, they over in Israel right now, getting ready to put the third temple up. A lot's going on with Iraq, Iran. We got all kinds of things. I will put more news events in the description box, as I always do. Uh, you can go there and uh, just click that button more, you know, more on the, my a video and you'll see a screen pull up with all the different uh, links and things like that. So I hope you guys know that by now. Some people don't know. Some people just learning how to use the internet. But, uh, you know, I'm just telling you guys it's time. It's really time to give our life to your Messiah. So let me go ahead and mute this out. Um, November, heaven and earth during the millennium. November 1, the captivity of Satan and his angels. The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of the great day. Jude 6. The earth looked like a desolate wilderness. Cities and villages shaken down by the earthquake lay in heaps. Mountains had been moved out of their places, leaving large caverns. Ragged rocks thrown out by the sea or torn out of the earth itself were scattered all over its surface. 
large trees had been uprooted and were strewn over the land. Here is to be the home of Satan with his evil angels for a thousand years. Here he will be confined to wander up and down over the broken surface of the earth and see the effects of his rebellion against God's law. For a thousand years he can enjoy the fruit of the curse which he has caused. Limited alone to the earth, he will not have the privilege of ranging to other planets to tempt and annoy those who have not fallen. During this time, Satan suffers extremely. Since his fall, his evil traits have been in constant exercise, but he is then to be deprived of his power and left to reflect upon the part which he has acted since his fall and to look forward with trembling and terror to the dreadful future when he must suffer for all the evil that he has done and be punished for all the sins that he has caused to be committed. I heard shouts of triumph from the angels and from the redeemed saints, which sounded like ten thousand musical instruments because they were to be no more annoyed and tempted by Satan, and because the inhabitants of other worlds were delivered from his presence and his temptations. To God's people, the captivity of Satan will bring gladness and rejoicing. Says the prophet, It shall come to pass in the day that Jehovah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy trouble and from the hard service wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this parable against the king of Babylon, here representing Satan, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? Jehovah hath broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers that smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke that ruled the nations in anger with a persecution that none restrained. Verses 3 to 6, Revised Version. Okay, people, um, that's all the day's uh, events here. But I tell you, I will put a lot more uh, information in the description box. I re really want you to go and finish listening to uh, the Common Sense Show where he's talking about what's going on in Washington right now. And uh, the quakes are keep rolling and rocking, so we have to keep praying for California, the fires, all these things. I don't know why my other video wouldn't come up, but... They had some kind of time element on that. I don't know. I couldn't get this to work. Uh, I guess they just streamed it and then they took it off or something. But we need to pray for those uh, fires going on there. I got families and friends all over California. Ministries are there. But, uh, we're keeping you guys in prayer over there too in California. Uh, Pastor Love and the women's ministry and the different ministries over there as well. Uh, so we ask that you guys continually praying for the nations, praying for Israel, praying for the countries. You know, I think about all this stuff happening with Turkey and Syria and North Korea and South Korea and Germany and Russia and China and Japan and Lebanon. You know, you can just go on and on and on. It's just so much going on over there. Uh, so we need to be praying always, people, that we can escape these things coming. Yeshua HaMashiach told us to pray that we are worthy to escape these things coming. So uh, we need to be praying that we get uh, worthy to escape these things coming. And thank you all you guys for your offerings and your prayers. I'm just saying here now, uh, between now here, November and November, December and January, all the proceeds are pretty much going to be going to help with the uh, homeless people in our counties uh, and areas that they can help with blankets. And uh, they were just talking about it on the news last night. Uh, they have a lot of shelters that was open up this week before all the cold and you know, all the snow we had uh, where people can, wouldn't have to sleep outside. Uh, and so we always like to give people blankets. They never have enough blankets, seem like, even at the thrift shops and the used places. And it seemed like they never have enough blankets. So we always try to do every year blankets. So if you want to send in a $25 or more, a $10 or more, I just say $10 or more, because the $10 we use to get gas cards, food cards. So if you want to send in um, $25 or more, $10 or more, as God leads you to help with this uh contribution for the homeless for blankets this year uh that's what we're going to be doing blankets we and i think last year we had ordered like ch children or uh, you know flannel shirts and uh hoodies and things like that but we're going to focus more on blankets because when i ran out of the blankets everybody was asking me do you have any more blankets and we i didn't order that many blankets it was probably 12 or 15 or 20 because that's what you know whatever money come in to help with them 
Uh, so if you want to help uh, this campaign with the blankets this year, that will be wonderful. Uh, you can send your donations to marner.campbell at gmail.com. Uh, mail and donations to fill, fill my cup ministries, post office box 414, Canyon City, Colorado 81215. Now, if you want to do world missions, like I said, we always support uh, Feed My Sheep today through Bob Barbara Ministries. Uh, they always help us as well uh, with the missionaries over in Uganda and Kenya, Nigeria, and uh, all these places where I've been trying to mentor and disciple certain young missionaries over there. So, you know, all these, we all work together for a purpose in Yeshua HaMashiach. So we thank you for all your blessings and all your offerings and all your cards and all your gifts and all your emails and all your phone calls. And I want to just say a happy thank you to my friend over in, uh, <laughs> hi, Pam, over in Galveston. I want to just tell her thank you so much for your wonderful card. She just sent us a wonderful card to tell us she loves us so much. God is at home in a loving heart. He lives in you. And I really appreciate the cards. Just encouraging to get cards from guys, you know, cards from people to encourage us and help us to keep going forth, not to give up because some days, you know, this is a small ministry, people. Let me tell you right now, very small ministry. I probably could have just say, oh, forget it. You know, it ain't worth it. But you know, every time I get an email from somebody who need me to call them and talk to them and pray with them and lead them to Christ or talk to them about this situation they're going through, that one person, you know, Jesus would have died for one, one people. So it ain't about numbers. It's not about how big your ministry is. It's about you going forth, keeping going forth, as we just talked about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So keep going forth and let Father provide. Because when I see Raja and, and Ramaru and all these brothers in India and Africa working in the vineyard who I introduced to Bob and he's using them mightily. I'm just like thanking God because Roger have done so much work in the vineyard and Ramaru and and uh, uh, my brother Eni in, in Nigeria and he was on. I remember when Eni was saying, "Oh, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do, Marner. I'm, I'm losing faith in God. I don't know what I'm gonna do." And I encouraged him that God wasn't through with him yet. And now he's doing ma massive work in Nigeria, and you got other brothers working in these countries as well, and India and all over. But I'm telling you, these are the few I know know that I have worked with personally, but I'm telling you, God is a magnificent God. We cannot give up on him. He don't give up on us. So I'm going to go now, people. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath. If I don't come back on today, uh, uh, tomorrow, I may be back on. But you guys have a wonderful day. And thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, this is a 42 minute video, so it shouldn't be that long. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye. Love you so much. Bye-bye.